ICR Gig Guide with listings from the Grapevine. Monday 11th of April. At the Steamboat Tavern you can see steel pictures and perplex. Thursday 14th of April. Harper's Ferry is at the Earl Kitchener and at the Royal Oak it's Webby's Jam Night. Friday 15th of April. At the Brewery Tap it's Bone Shakers. At PJ McGinty's it's A.D. Johnson, Mark Elliott and Phil Jackson. Junkyard Aliens are at the Railway and Teenage Kicks at the Royal Oak. At the Selkirk Inn it's the Hypochondriacs. Blarney Rovers are at the Spread Eagle, and at the Steamboat Tavern it's Underline the Sky. Saturday 16th of April. At the Black Horse it's Rocks Off. Rod Frost is at the Duke of York and Dressed to Kill at the Manor Ballroom. At PJ McGinty's it's Paddy's Nights, and at the Railway Anything But Ordinary. At the Royal Oak it's Clay Pigeon, Tag Nuts and Seven Day Conspiracy. Sunday 17th of April. At PJ McGinty's you can see the Be Goods, Jack Rundle and Version. And at the Spread Eagle, it's Waxy's Dargle. Monday, 18th of April. At the Steamboat Tavern, it's We Are the Robots and Irrelevant Protest. Wednesday, 20th of April. It's Jam Night at the Masons. Thursday, 21st of April. Webby's Jam Night is on at the Royal Oak and at the Steamboat Tavern, it's Beanstalk. For more information about gigs in the region, visit www.grapevineweb.co.uk. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Naked Football Show. Joining Phil and myself tonight, Hello. we welcome in the shape of a lumberjack, Mr. Sean Laws. <laughs> Hello. All the way from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our, our very own uh, Mr. The Claw. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. The Claw. <laughs> okay, do we... Well, we uh, all went. You, we yeah, all we went. all went last night. What so a last night's gold and, fest. And uh, Palace, of course. Do you want to go and, that and way or the other way? Well, we'll do them together. Yeah. The goal fest first then. Go on in. How, what, what did you gentlemen make to last night's 3-3 draw with uh, Middlesbrough? Well, I mean, obviously it's exciting and it was great the way they came back, but it, I thought the quality was quite... Mm. I mean, it shows we've still got a lot to do. If we're going to press for the playoffs next season, we've got a lot to, to tighten up. And the defence was awful, wasn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, not just uh, the defence. I mean, I thought actually a lot of the... the Frailties at the back were caused by the midfield as much yeah. as the Well, defense. I don't think Middles were a particularly good team. They were quite sharp up front, but I, I thought, you know, it, looking ahead, they're the sort of team we've got to beat, sort of, you know, with a bit to spare, really. And, and I mean, even on Saturday, we, I think uh, Lee Barrett had more to do than Speroni. Probably in the, well, we did that thing of drifting off in the second yeah, half a bit, yeah, didn't we? Again, yeah. Like we I mean, did at Burnley, yeah. Yeah. And then, Last night, um, I mean, the defense wasn't communicating. They were getting nervous and not talking to each other, and even the goalie wasn't talking at one point. As we got into a lot of muddles out back, and Middlesbrough pressured them. 
mm. made it, it was, worse. It was a completely bizarre game, though. In the first, it was forty-one well, and forty-two, or forty-two and forty-three. Yeah. They scored, wasn't it? But yeah. prior to yeah. that, we thought we're well, in no danger here whatsoever. No, it was no, very no. comfortable. No. We got yeah. the goal, which is a bit fluky, but. Yeah. And then it, I said in the paper, in the, in the Rebecca report, it was like a sort of in cricketing terms, which obviously you won't get being a Canadian, um, it was yeah. like a middle order batting collapse, wasn't it? Yeah. You, you got to that stage where you've you, you kind of got your, your openers have got you 150 for <laughs> naught, yeah, yeah. and then you lose two or three quick wickets, and suddenly you're in trouble. It was, it was, it was, it was just. Complete lack of composure, and, and yet you know, for for, for a, you know, being a bit positive, for, um, I mean, for for a while, just just after the second goal, for a few minutes, we were, we were we were fantastic. You know, we were really pressing them. We were really on top. It was really exciting. You know, and and at the end, their goalie made a couple of really good because mm. I'm I'm at the North Stand end, as, as you know, and. Uh, you know, that save from Delaney's header particularly was really, really good because he didn't. Really it was a good header, and he didn't have any time at all. So, you know, it's all Jekyll and Hyde. But you know, if you wanted to be critical, it's you know we've got we've got a lot to do. And well, I mean, Jill, Jill knows that, doesn't he? I mean, mm, what did you think overall, having not seen town for a while? Because obviously you were. In. Yeah, I mean, I was impressed with um, Connor Wickham when we switched him, put him up front. I think both games. We would have played a lot better if you'd been up there the whole game. Oh yeah, uh, when he went up front, he was a different player. Yeah, and it? Lee Martin coming on last night changed yeah. the left side. Um, Josh Carson obviously on Saturday was great, and uh, his effort and his his speed, but just even his effort. He's young, and I'd say, but doesn't know any better to just keep running and and keep trying to get the ball off them. Uh, mm. So it's great. We need more of that. We need more aggression up front, and it was just great to see them doing that because listening. What, as I do over the internet, listening to the games, I wasn't getting the impression that was happening in earlier games. Mm. Well, I thought the thing when they switched it round, they took Scotland off. Who I think had another. He was all right for the first spell mm-hmm. in, in the game when we had a lot of the ball and the ball was going into feet and all that. He's, but he's only good when when that's happening. Is it? Once once that stops, it's, it's, it's almost it's very wasted, isn't it? I think. Mm-hmm. And um, things changed when we went up front, but the tempo of the game, the whole tempo of the game. Went up, didn't it? With with mm. Martin starting to run at people, and it, 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 it very it, the game had drifted, hadn't it, for town? Yes, I yes. Up to so that point. I think, yeah, I think they were the two big changes, Martin and Wickham. And uh, I mean, Martin's very aggressive, isn't he? I'm sure when he first came under under Keane, he he ran about a lot, but he didn't have that fire that he seems to have now. He mm. really gets stuck in, doesn't he? Yeah, and he really makes things happen. I think he was very. Uh, I wonder if he was left on the bench yesterday to. Kind of show him you not you don't just come back into the team. No. You've got to fight for your place, and he showed when he came on. He got that. He wanted to fight for it, didn't he? Yeah. But you contrast what happened when they brought Wickham on and on and uh, wrote Martin on and put Wickham up front versus Saturday when they took Scotland off and brought Dyer on, and we fell apart. So, mm. I mean, that's and he never really got into the game. Kim, no, did he? no, he didn't seem to be up yeah. front even. He seemed to be playing back in the midfield. Left, sort of, every time he's come back. on, I don't know whether you've noticed this as well because the previous games, he seemed to play, be playing somewhere between the midfield and the striker. Yeah, yeah. It seemed as if he was sort of tr- Jewel was trying him out in a role, and yeah. I still I still think he'll go for him in the summer. I have to say, Do you? yeah, yeah. Well, more than Bullard or as well. Oh, as well as I think yeah. that's the. I don't think there's any reason for getting either of them in other than the fact that he doesn't look at them in and the summer. And you think Norris will go? I think it looks increasingly likely if he can't yeah. get hold of his agent. But he had a poor game last night. I thought he was drifted past him again. Yeah, yeah. he, you know, I mean, I know people are divided on Norris. I, I, I don't know myself. I mean, sometimes he looks a really good, vital player, and other times he looks, you know, fairly, fairly ordinary to me. What did you think of yeah. Norris? Yeah, I, I, for what I saw, I thought he was quite good. Better, than, better than I expected. Both, really? both games, yeah. really, from what I've been hearing. Um, mm. They're, yeah, and you're right. He's a bit inconsistent, though, and the same as the the way the defense was uh, last night, especially. Just and that's our problem year, all year. We start off well in a game and then play poorly, or the other way around. We, we just can't carry it for a consistent ninety minutes, and and uh, we pay for it. But or we get very close, like on Saturday, where we should have beaten them three or four to one. Mm. Yeah, we, just, we just can't put well teams ahead. away. Yeah. And uh, but I think again, hopefully, we saw something last night that. Will help with the lineup in the future with, with Wickham up front. I think that's what they'll want. To do. I don't know. You, you can't seem to say, "Oh, I don't think with the personnel that we've got that we can play Wickham in the middle." But I, the best games that Wickham's had, I think, yeah. have been on his own. The, the yeah. Newcastle, I think, yeah. Newcastle away was probably his best game this time last year. 
Mm. And he was on his own against Colaccini, wasn't it? Yeah, something like and that. He, and he, and he, um, I thought he did really well in that game. And last night when he when he switched, he was very good. Um, and Carson. Yeah, and he's got the sort of fox in the box type Carson well, buzzing yeah, around got, him a bit, t- hasn't he? It's not just so much that, but the two of them on the you've got Carson wide on one side and, and Martin on the other, and you've got a lot of running up and down, yeah, haven't I, you? I mean, I must say, I, I know. I mean, it's very early days, so four games, but I'm very excited about Carson. I think mm. he, look, he looks really, really good to me, really special. He's sort of damn, d- the best player since Darren Ambrose, but a very different sort of player. But he's got that, you know, he, ju- he just seems to have everything at the moment. You know, he, he gets stuck in. He's quick. He's he's clever. He's he's plays nice balls in. He's he's you know. He's got running in him as well, isn't he? He's, yeah. He's, I mean, after four games, obviously, he may yeah, you know, we've seen it all before. But I th- yes. I think I I really like him. I, I think he's uh, but he came from nowhere, didn't he? To, yeah, uh, as far as to most some of extent. I mean, I've seen I've seen a fair bit of him in the reserves, and he he, he looked a decent player. Did he stand but, out? But at seven, well, he's seventeen. You see, so yeah. he's playing in the reserves at seventeen, and you're thinking, well, he's. He's, he's doing well in the reserves at 17 so yeah, yeah. Um, I mean I think he'll probably end up as a central midfielder kind of dictating yeah. it because he is such a he's a good footballer isn't he I yeah. think that's and he's, that's he's, his crosses show a bit of um, intelligence I think you know he's, he, he whips them in uh, mm. good and good you know, we we have a lot of people who get to the byline and just whack it over aimlessly. You know, mm. it goes silent out for throwing. Yeah, he know? thought about what he was doing. But a lot of times, he he didn't always cross it. In a few times, he tried. He dinked it around the defense yeah, and ran it, is, it yeah. in. And so he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's thinking out there. And he's, and he's I mean, that first game, uh, he gained a lot of confidence. I think it was two goals. And we saw it at the beginning of the second game on set, on uh, last night. He mm. really started off well. I thought. Yeah, yeah he the did. first yeah. he did yeah. fade a bit, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I think also last night. A bit of inexperience from him second half because I, I thought a hell of a lot came through the left back, didn't mm-hmm. it, Bennett? Yes. And he he was the yes, man he, that should have been. He, he should have been. He should have been supporting mm. Edwards, shouldn't he? Yeah, I think Edwards was quite exposed last night. Yeah. Um, which I, I mean, I, you can point to the defence, and I don't think that Delaney had a particularly good night. I mean that. I mean, it, I think it was almost a fantastic own goal, really, when he when he belted it and <laughs> managed it his own bar. Yeah. Um, Phil Whelan, do you remember Phil Whelan scored an own goal years yeah. ago where he belted it like that? Um, and then the second goal, where was Ken? I mean, well, well, yeah, McCauley lost it, and that. Uh, but but but, but Delaney, n- neither Delaney nor Kennedy were in any well, sort of position. Yeah. Well, Delaney was in. I don't think Delaney was in a particularly bad position because, mm. I mean, obviously um, McCauley got, got uh, lost out very high up the field with Edwards already com- committed because we lost the ball, didn't we? We'd, we'd yeah. already committed a lot of players forward. Um, Edwards was caught up. Well up on the right, um, McCauley got turned by Halliday, who I thought did very well when he came on, made a mm. huge impression, um, and was beaten. And Delaney was stuck between a rock and a hard place with Halli- Halliday going going down the left and McDonald in the middle. Yeah, and he was well, he was, was free Kennedy? right from the beginning. Yeah, where Ken- was Kennedy? Again, I mean, Kennedy. Delaney, had what should happen? Delaney should come across to cover Halliday, shouldn't he? Yeah. And Kennedy should come across to take yeah. the man in the middle. But Kennedy was nowhere, so we had both fullbacks that were pushed up, yeah. and we were, it was it, wide open for but it was a su- minute. Or it was an extraordinary. It was a Sunday morning goal, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about yeah, Kennedy. Yeah. I, I sometimes yeah. I think you know he, he looks very good, and he's, he he should be good, shouldn't he, with his experience yeah. and yeah. track record? But other times he looks he, he looks very poor. I don't, I don't know. Know. Just lack but he had a poor game last night. He did, and he got injured in the second half, and may well miss. I mean, you don't know what stage he started to feel his hamstring. Whether that had well, he does seem a bit injury prone. Doesn't well, that's about the fourth time a season he's had a yeah, hamstring injury. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we need that's a position we need to fill in the summer. With the left back. Well, we, well, we do. Have, we this is what we, we haven't had a decent left back for a long, long time. Well, I still think We've Shane O'Connor's, a, years, decent, so. Shane O'Connor's yeah. a decent left back. I know Phil will argue he's probably not quite tall enough, but he's especially at home bombing forward. He's a great left back, but neither of the kids and Luke Hyam. He's talking about get, looking for a uh, holding midfielder on this in the oh. Star, isn't he, or on your website? Um, Luke Hyam hasn't even got a look in either. And well, you the think, well, hang on, he's got a yeah, he, 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 he was superb, didn't he? Mm. But he's not um, even getting in the team. That's a bit strange, do you not think? Well, he clearly is looking for the, the Sean Derry, isn't he? That the, the Roy mm. Keane wanted last summer, the, the John Eustace, or mm. were, all these kind of type of players that, that Keane saw that the squad was missing. Have you seen Joe White? I have. Uh, is, it, is he anywhere? Because he, he's primarily he's, left back. Yeah, he? he's left back. He gets up and down. He's, he's got a, a decent engine. He's. Uh, 
We he's put a fantastic cross in in the reserve game against Watford the other week, and no one, it was one of those balls that was just absolutely asking to be belted home, and no one did. Um, but it was, yes, he's 17, though, you know. He's, well, and Car- I know, Carson, yeah. well, he's, a year, yeah. he's a year you younger know, than. Maybe, than, maybe, he's, maybe he's, I it, don't know. He was six, 17 in January, I think. No, I haven't seen him So it's probably know. a little bit too early, but. Next season, maybe. But then, as you say, you've got O'Connor, who is a left back, and of course Jamie Peters, who we've not seen very much of, coming on to mm. to matters Canadian. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, where where do people in Canada see Jamie Peters at the moment? Because obviously, when he came over here, he was the next big thing in Canadian football, wasn't it? He? he was, and and um, in some ways, he still is. Uh, we there is a lot of talk about him. Um, again, I guess we want him to be out and playing more and and on Ipswich, but. I don't think it's going to happen from what I've been seeing and hearing on some of the boards that uh, are at home. Um, I think the manager's stuck with who he wants to play, and I don't think Jamie's in his in, in the future of Ipswich Town from what we're seeing. I get that I'm impression, not, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any way uh, he will find a spot on this team. What, what's, so his, what's his role in, in the Canadian team? Is he, is he played as a... Is a midfielder or an out-and-out winger? Or? He's, he's usually mid, midfielder, right? Mid and... Um, Although I have to say, I don't, we don't, I don't hear much about him playing for Canada. He, they played Belarus recently, and um, he came on. Not, didn't he, I think. Yeah, he didn't start, but I think there were a hundred fans in Belarus watching that game. And uh, <laughs> and for, for me, I'm from Canada, and I didn't even know there was a game. So it's just it's not covered at all. No. Um, so it's very hard to get information. But there's about this, you know, about an inch in the paper um, telling the score and who scored, and I've never who, even heard of who scored the goal. So. Did they, did they win? Didn't they, they won one nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm but, they won. So in that sense, it's hard for me to have an opinion, and I have no idea how he played because we can't see it. It's not. But he played. Quite, he played in the game against Greece, wasn't it? The previous. They played friendly? before, yeah. And they yes. lost one nothing. Two nil. Yeah. One nil. I, I think I watched it actually. <laughs> did you? Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, but he played right back in that, didn't he? I think it was the first time okay. he played right back. He's usually right mid. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he's what twenty three. He should have a lot, Maybe a lot left. more than that now. I'd yeah, he's still youngish, he's still, though. You know, he's still got a lot he of years. Have a lot left. Yeah. But you should have established yourself. Mm. I mean, he has played. I, I did notice the other day he's actually started about 100 games or something for us, which I was slightly yeah. surprised by. But he's been hurt by being a player that it can play anywhere. Yeah. Effectively to fill in. Yes. Uh, not to start or, or to be a consistent starter in that position. And that, again, that's probably hurt him. If he had picked a spot and said, I'm playing here. And, and establish himself in whatever league or level he could establish himself at, then he'd have a nice career there. But again, I don't think he'll be here. Do you think Steve McCall, going back a few years, because he was always seen as a, as a very versatile player? I think he's a bit old now, Phil, honestly. Who is <laughs> <laughs> scout himself? <laughs> no. Do, do you think his career was adversely affected at town by people seeing him as the fill in man? Well, it's difficult, really. I think I think he was. I, I was not a great fan of his to be perfect. No. I think he was quite lucky that he came along at a time when the when the great team was was disintegrating, and he was kind of he was there at the right time, really. Right. Um, so, but I mean, I, was, I mean, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have got in the eighty one team without without injuries. Without being the man. But then, but but that's that's the that, I mean, that was a hell of a team. So, so yeah. that's not much of a. And I think he was lucky that he came through just at the time that. You know that they were shorter players, and he, and he he was okay. I mean, he did a good he did a good service, but yeah, I, ne- I never thought he was anything like. He, I, I would never think he'd, he'd be one of the Ipswich Town greats that people. Would. I was just thinking about players played, that have been similarly. But he played about three hundred. He would he played two or three hundred games. Something like that, yeah. yeah, so I mean, he, yeah. But other players with similar versatility. Stockwell wasn't. He he he. I suppose Stockwell wasn't one of these players. He kind of established himself in as fullback, then as a midfielder, and then back as a fullback again, didn't he? Yeah, and he even played and as a centre forward. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 Is the game changing now, though, with money and mm. being such a big issue that we can't afford to have players that aren't specific <coughs> can't play at one position consistently well, you, or to a certain well, level? And do you remember different club? Do you remember Paul Madeley played for Leeds? Yeah. He was yeah. an all round. He even played for England. But he never really established himself in the Leeds tight scene, or not, not, not in the same way as um, some of the other players did, because he was always 
Yeah. Switching around. Uh, though he would have walked into most other sides, though, wouldn't he? Because yeah. he was a good yeah. player, yeah. Um, do we want to do yeah, emails? Because we've got quite a lot of. As usual, we run out of time. Yeah, we've got we quite a lot do. of them today. Uh, yeah. Right, this is Oliver ITFC. Evening, chaps. I was wondering yeah. what your opinions are on the Macaulay and Delaney contract situation. I know they've been playing well lately, but they always seem to make one error, like against Palace and last night. This was. A Last night, I, I can't really work that out. Countless mistakes, anyway. I like both of them, but also like Smith, Brown, and would like to see Eastman in centre de- defence as opposed to when he was out of position at right back. Well, that's true. Um, and that's sent from his Blackberry, so that's the last bit. Well, there you there go. You go. Um, what do we thoughts, think that's? Halves, then? I mean, <laughs> we well, uh, well I, for, I, for what's right, I think McCauley is, is, must, is a must. Mm. Delaney, yeah, I like Delaney. He's, he's pretty good, but he's not, you know. It, it's number one Macaulay, number two Delaney for me, mm. and, that, and we do still let in a lot of silly goals. For we don't, that, well, we don't let in loads of goals. No, do no, we? we don't. No, even, no. even when we were at our worst this season, we weren't letting in hordes no, of goals. No, 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 no. the other way around. We were we're not scoring goals. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we have they have a bad game. That's fine. Um, you know, we I think we need to keep them both. So. I think when I I, I, I I was looking at the table earlier, I think we we're about the. Funny enough, we're about. Uh, I think it's, uh, there's only about nine teams that scored more than us, despite. And, oh, really? uh, and there's about. I mean, might be wrong. I, uh, just a quick recce. And there's about ten teams have conceded fewer. Well, no, so we're, so we're, one, isn't it? Yeah. So we're yeah. kind of, you know, just just in the top half on both counts. Yeah. But you know, the, the margins are quite fine, and you know, you look at Norwich. They've only scored about sort of fifteen goals more than us. Mm. Which is not much, is it? Well, it's just ground hold, isn't it, really? I suppose yeah. so. Yeah. And, and, and again, their defence isn't that much better than ours. No. So well, I think the margins are so close now. Well, I think that's know. in this league. It's Everything is very narrow, isn't it? Well, what do you think of Smith and Smith and Brown? Um, yeah. where, where do you... Uh, and, and, and Eastman. Uh, Smith's obviously got time on his contract, but Brown and, and Eastman, do you, do you expect them to stay? The only thing I've heard about Brown... Uh, Briefly, I think is that uh, he seemed to have a, a good game or two when he was in, in, yeah. the, in the field and the side, um, and I think again the general consensus is that Eastman was played in the wrong position. Mm. So yeah. uh, obviously, I don't know if he's played uh, in the reserves and he's, he's and actually not played a lot in the reserves because of course yeah. Brown and Smith have been there. Is it, well, I mean, right. How many centre halves can they cover? You can't keep Perry. them all, yeah. and yeah. I, I mean if it was, I, 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 I like them all to be honest. But I would, if if I had to choose, I'd probably think Eastman would be the one to. To lose out, do you, I, even I, though he's a bit younger than the rest? Well, that's just on what I've seen. I mean, and it's probably not fair because he, is, 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 as as uh, as uh, Sean said, he he played most of his games at right back. Mm. Really. Well, and I do wonder whether they'll send if they keep Eastman and Brown on. I think they'll keep Brown. Eastman's probably the thing I think about Eastman is because they let Meekings go. You know, the oh. second year scholar who I expected to, to stay on. But then you look at it and think, well, if they're going to keep some of the others on. When's he going to get a game? Yeah. You can only have so many players. Anyway, we need to get through. Yeah, we need to rattle stories. through. Uh, just a quick one from James Cummins. Well, it's two bits. The first bit, is there any official news on how Gary Ablett is doing? Anyone know? I've heard nothing no. at all. Well, that's, that's an easy one. Um, if Jules is targeting a holding midfield player, this was quite a predictable email, I'd have thought, because it could be more like this. What does the panel think that means for Luke Heim, who still hasn't been given a game under the current boss? It doesn't seem... I don't know. He, he said that he'll be a good player. He thinks he'll be a good player in the future. Um, but I, th- I think... Surely this is a good time of the season to play. Well, it might be. It might be a good time to give him a go. But... Um, I think he, he just thinks, and, and, and Keane was the same, that you, you need a sort of Derry or a, or a Eustace with a, the nous in this division. Mm. Isn't that how you see it? You see it? Well, yeah, I mean, I thought Haim, when he when he started the season, he, I thought he was very effective and very good. I mean, I think that, the, I thought, as a, you know, he, again, he was a revelation, but of course, one of the things that it did make us, did seem to make us quite negative. I thought well, having an hour and out holding player. Yeah, and 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 perhaps I don't, I don't know if there's if he's a, a less creative holding player than than some others that you might mention, but I don't know. Mm. I thought I thought that was the, that was the problem. I think just perhaps the physical side. He just thinks he's you know he's not a huge well, he's, bloke. No, he's, he's not. Young. But he's he's certainly brave, and he got oh, stuck yeah, in, yeah. didn't he? He was no um, he was no slouch. He, he wasn't exactly. He wasn't scared to. To, to put himself about, which is why Roy Keane liked him, I think. Uh, and then, of course, he like you know again, youngster. He he kind of tailed off a bit, and then he got sent off, and he he hasn't had a look in since. Has no, he? no, another one. 
you don't. I mean, I think he'll get offered a contract. But whether, 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 as I say, whether the balance, whether he made the team a bit, you know, too much that way. I don't know. See much of Hyam, Sean? No, I haven't. But uh, for the midfield, I mean, I was listening online. Um, did not sound like Ledbetter was doing anything in the games I was listening to. I never heard, just didn't wasn't impressed with what mm. he was doing. And then last night, of course, he gets two goals, but. When I'm listening, I don't hear his name said mm. very much. I don't hear any any spectacular plays. I'm very disappointed with so Ledbetter. I thought, is that yeah. somebody that he keeps the ball? I think that's the thing. You get the ball to Ledbetter, he will keep it, but he doesn't do what Jimmy Bullard does, for example, no. of making the the more incisive no. pass. Yeah. Uh, and he will throw himself into a tackle, which Bullard won't do. Yeah. Um, but you do, yeah, you do wonder that he might be one that they look at perhaps, perhaps selling on. Because I mean, if they're going to get a holding midfield player, they're going to have to set the midfield up slightly differently. Well, than they well are exactly. Now. You've got we've got quite a lot of midfielders actually. You know, yes, so he's keeping Healy. Again, we we can't we can't pick them all, so yeah. you, you're going to have to uh, let a few go if you're going to. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Next. Um, this is from John Smile. I won't read the whole lot out, but to, to suffice to say, he's not happy with Delaney or Kennedy. Um, but he says I'll be listening to this on the podcast while running the London Marathon on Sunday and would welcome any messages of support well, so go, good yeah. luck young man yeah, well, go for yeah, it Mr for Smile yeah. so yeah he's not particularly happy with Delaney and, and Kennedy but we have sort of covered that pretty much um, Stuart Angel do you think Emmy regrets not dispensing of Mr Keane's services sooner like after the Barnsley game when he should have gone to give Paul Jewell a greater amount of games to get us in the playoffs Stuart well, well, look at it now. We're not a million miles off, are we? Points per game yeah. wise. Um, so maybe he does, but you can always look at it with. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. but I mean, again, I was looking at the league time. And the big, the big problem is we've lost too many. You know, if you look at the, we, we, our actual number of wins is not that far less than than some of the top six. Mm. But we, we, the ones yeah, we, we haven't, won, drawn the ones we haven't yeah. won, we've mostly lost. And uh, if we'd have turned some of those losses in you know into into draws at home particularly yeah. at home at I mean home we we all t- we always tend to have the have the have the view that you know three points is is what we're aiming for and if we can't get three draws hardly worth mm. bothering with but actually over the course of a season they do they do actually mount up mm. and they can make a difference as you say if we had another five points now it would make a hell of a difference. We would be having a different conversation altogether. And if we'd won last night, it would have kept it alive. But there's still yeah. five teams you have to climb over, yeah, and that makes yeah. it next to impossible. Oh, but impossible. We can dream. We can dream. Yes. Okay, uh, from our main Raymondo, who uh, so, or, or he pretty much mirrors John Smale's comments. After the defensive shambles of last night, should we be withdrawing the contract offers already made? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I think players have a bad game, and I don't think the defenders are the only ones culpable. Yeah. You? Exactly, no. it's one game. I mean, you know, you've got to judge it over a longish period. And of course, it was a game between two teams who've got nothing really to play for. And well, I think that made it much more open from the. Do you, do you think it was because Middlesbrough perhaps they, they didn't they didn't play the you know they didn't have the big the big uh, tall, um, powerful. Sent the uh, strikers. They they were they were sort of running at the defence more. Yeah, I, you know, perhaps. They haven't got any striker. I mean, Tony Mowbray saying he's got one striker fit now, and, yeah. and Mendes punched somebody uh, at the weekend. Didn't I they? mean, big defenders always uh, often. Oh, sorry, not always. Often struggle against these sort people of people running you know, at them. N- yeah. nippier sort of uh, more mobile people than the. But I mean, they were not. I mean, half the problem was that they were kind of waltzing past the midfielders and then coming at the centre halves at pace. Well, yeah. it's always hard for centre halves, and I just yeah. think the midfield just let them down to a great degree. There were anything else? Yep, uh, Johnny Layston woke up on a glorious Saturday morning last weekend and do, thought it'd be. Do, do, do. Sorry. Yeah, we woke up on yeah, and seemed a great day to go and watch the town. Then I remembered it was promotion day for tickets. But unfortunately, I'm not a season ticket holder, uh, nor close enough to a season ticket holder to ask them to buy me a reduced price ticket. So I was left with the option of paying thirty odd pound for a ticket and feeling like the only sucker in town who'd paid that price. Was it ten pounds for season ticket holders? No, it wasn't. It was ten pound. A season ticket holder could buy a ticket for ten pound for their yes, mate, couldn't they? Friend. Sort of. If that's what he means. If so, why not twenty pounds for non-season ticket holders when there's a ticket promotion? Watching the town these days feels like a click. You're either in with the in crowd, or the club extends its index finger and tells you how it really feels about you. The tradition of watching football was a walk-up sport where the family would consider what they wanted to do with their day in the morning, or fans would consider going further afield and taking in a game that didn't involve their favourite team. No longer. By the way, Felix Doe. Beats was wonderful last Saturday afternoon. 
Well, I think he's got a point there that the, the, the walk-up price is a two. You presumably would have paid a walk-up price. No, I was lucky enough on Saturday to be uh, hosted in the in the corporate oh. Sir Walter Osmond suite oh. by, by uh, uh. my cousin. Thank you, Nick. Uh, <laughs> we had a great time up there. But I, I mean... I'm, I can't really comment on that because it cost me about two hundred pounds to go to a game because of my <laughs> flights and travel yeah. and everything else. Yeah. I think so. he's right, but it, 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 are we any worse than any other club? I mean, I'm I proud, it, I I'm proud I it's the world we live in, and it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not right. And it's I not think right. match day prices are too expensive. That's, that's yeah, what yeah, I, yeah I mean, he's right when you say you you could walk up on the day on a whim and just pay you. Right, you've got a few mm. seconds, so oh. quickly, last email, oh. this one came in through you, didn't it, Phil? Uh, Clayton Donaldson, from a possible striker. Final. Yes, that's it, from Lawrence Murphy, what about Clayton Donaldson? Is he someone who's impressed you, the crew striker? I haven't seen him. I've seen, <laughs> I saw him play against us and I thought he was decent enough, but yeah. there's plenty of candidates, aren't there, really? Perhaps we'll do strikers next week. And prediction quickly for Saturday? 2-1. 2-1. What, 2 Of course. Yeah. 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 Well, good man. And one all. Uh, I think we'll probably win. Yeah, we usually win. Do we Two. play? Bristol City. Bristol City away, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Nil-nil. Super David. Nil-nil. Yeah. OK, thanks, everyone. Time has moved on yet again. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Sean. And thanks, Mr. The Claw. Till next week, have a good one. Bye-bye-bye. Goodbye.